Welcome to Comics on a Pyre, a channel to have a meaningful conversation over movies, life, books, and shows, and maybe just a spot to spend time BSing over comics. If you like your entertainment with a bit of substance, then you, my vagabond friend, have come to the right tavern. Tether your horse by the post and come right on in and warm yourself by the fire. Tap that subscribe button, and for the next few minutes, my fellow George Carlin reprobate, lend me your ear. So one day, while surfing the net, I saw a trailer for an up and coming DC animated movie. Being a big fan of DC's animated movies, I was interested instantly, just by the quality of their previous work. Superman, Red Sun. Okay. After reading a little bit about it, I discovered it was a what if story, or Elseworlds, as DC likes to call it. A scenario where heroes are taken from their usual settings and put into strange times and places. Some that have existed and others that can't, couldn't, or shouldn't exist. The result is a story that make characters who are familiar as yesterday seem as fresh as tomorrow. Well, that's DC's take on it. The basic premise is, is what if Superman's spacecraft had landed in Russia instead of America? How would things be different? Would Superman still be the same person? Or would living in Russia during the times of the Cold War change him into someone totally different? Would he be a product of his environment? Coming down to the age-old question of nature versus nurture. I found the premise to be interesting. But after reading it and ruminating over which way I would approach this overview, a few things dawned on me. This comic is not just a story, it is generally something to consider and should be read because it makes you ask questions about ourselves and points out certain human themes that are timeless. That's not to say that the work itself is perfect. No, I found the dialogue at times clunky and unbelievable. The relationship between Lex and Lois unlikely and a few important details missing to make it a true comparable what a story to the Superman that we all know and love today. Equally comparing how Superman would act if all things were the same except for the place of his upbringing. Well enough about the fluff and let's dig in a little deeper into the story. First off, there is next to nothing about Superman's childhood, other than when he realized he had powers and his childhood sweetheart. I found this concerning, and to be honest, a little off-putting. Because let's face it, if I'm reading the first issue in a story and it talks about the hero's beginning periods of his life, I want to know about his childhood, how he was raised, and his parents' values. Let me ask you, viewer, a question. How much of an impact did your parents have on you as a kid? I want to go out on a limb here and say that it was a major one. From the clothes that you wore to the very foods that you ate, from the customs that you reenact to this day, even to the religious gods that you worship, if you do so all, at all. Hell, if your father wasn't in your life, it probably still made a powerful impact in it. After all, like Tyler Durden stated, Our fathers were our models for God. If our fathers bailed, what does that tell you about God? Oh, no, no, I don't. So saying all this, where were Superman's parents in this story? Anyone worth their salt as a Superman fan knows the impact that Jonathan and Martha Kent had on Superman's upbringing. But in this story, there is no frame of reference to go on. He is just a young adult Superman in the first issue. Second thing that I noticed was that Superman had no secret identity. He was just Superman all the time. He was not a mild working man on his off days working an average job. 
In fact, he has no alternative name but Superman in the whole story. This led me to believe he had no personal life, but only his public persona. Not much of a haven for a man to just unwind when he needed some time to get away. I mean, we all need time away from the pressures of work. Some other things in the story were often off-putting as well. Let's go down the list. Lex Luthor was pretty much the same. An American who was a genius and always looking for a challenge and a puzzle to solve. But his and Lois' marriage seemed, to me, unrealistic and estranged from one another. There was no signs of love, romance, or even a thread of mutual interest to keep the relationship going. Now, everyone knows that it's in a long-term relationship. You need some kind of spark or common ground to keep the relationship going, or it would just fizzle out and die, like a flower without the sun on unfertile soil to plant its roots in. And Lois Lane, the character seems to be just put into the story because she was the lover of Superman in our world. Why do I say this? Because she plays no major part in the story. Her actions have no consequences to them. And she seems to just exist in the story. I mean, Lois Lane and our world was a spitfire. A no-nonsense reporter doing what it takes to get the scoop and verbally giving it out to anyone that crossed her path. This one seemed to be hanging on on the outer fringes of her and Lex's marriage. The dutiful, submissive, attentive wife always seeking her husband's attention. I mean, at one point, Lex tells her that he is divorcing her because he lost a fight to Superman and she never remarries and just hangs around for years. I don't think a beautiful, intelligent wife would hang around an inattentive husband for years. I mean, look at what happened to Silk Spectre and Dr. Manhattan's relation from years of him being inattentive to her needs. And at least he tried to fake it. But she is not the only character I had a problem with in this story. Okay, Superman's spacecraft lands in Russia. But how did Bruce Wayne become Russian? In the story, his parents are killed like before, but he survives as a poor runaway that lives on to seek revenge on his parents' murderer. Now, this in of itself is not so bad, but I believe the story made Batman out to be what I believe a character of his otherworldly self. I found his persona to be a character that was kind of hokey and a bit off his rocker, but that may be because he had no money to spend on his plight. And the American Batman was a billionaire that could afford high-tech gadgets. You know, like the saying goes, the poor are crazy and the rich, well, they're just eccentric. These things made me, despite wanting to, dislike a lot of the story, but there was a lot of it I can honestly say I did like. Let's start at the beginning with the Americans' Red Scare tactics. The Russians are coming. They're evil, not to be trusted. They seek to spread communism and to take over the world. They have a top secret weapon that can see everything, can fly, is super strong. Beware. A lot of this propaganda is reflected of its times. Governments have been and always will try to put a we against them scenario in our heads. It's easier to control us that way. For example, beware the threat is coming to take over your jobs. If you elect me, I'll save them. Similar events have happened in the Vietnam War with the Gulf of Tatanka incident and the mexican America War of 1846, where slave owners instigated a war just to expand their wealth by acquiring more land for their slaves to work on. But this is also where our worlds and else worlds Superman stay true to the character. He wants to help all of mankind. And since he has the ability to, he does so. Breaking down stereotypes built into us by our governments against people we have never even met. Showing that the others aren't always bad people. In fact, a lot of times, they are a lot like us with the same hopes and dreams. But sadly, 
on the flip side of the coin, they are a lot like us by having the same fears that we do. Fears that can be used to motivate us to hate people we don't even know. Superman's position in Russia, I felt, was a lot like George R.R. R. Martin's theme in the Game of Thrones, where a good man cannot survive amongst bad men. Superman begins as a dove among serpents, each wanting to jockey for a more powerful position around him. But because of his powers, he is able to overcome these threats. But also because of his naivete, he tries with good intentions to make things right for mankind, virtually eliminating poverty, disease, and ignorance. But at what cost? The only problem is he does this through dictatorship, forcing people to act a certain way for what he believes is for the betterment of mankind. What is that saying? The road to hell is paid with good intentions. Well, I believe I said enough on this story, Eric. But what else would you expect? It was written by Mark Miller, the man behind Nemesis, Wanted and Superior. So if you read this story and found it a little bit interesting, then by all means, pick up these story arcs as well. For I can tell you from personal experience, they are just interesting as well also. If not, a little disturbing. Yeah, just a little. In the meanwhile, till next time, check out my comic book YouTube channel, Comics on the Power, for other videos like this one. While there, tap on that bell icon to be notified of future videos when they drop. And oh yes, until next time, as always, keep reading my friends.